Welcome back to part two where I'm going to show you how to complete the file and then we will be able to carry on to the end and you can then take it over to your scan and cut and cut everything out and play to your heart's content. I hope you like the video. If you do, please remember to like, share and subscribe and leave comments at the bottom underneath the video. If there's anything else you'd like me to look at, please leave notes. So let's, without further ado, let's get on with part two. Stick with it. I'm sure you'll have good fun, loads of good fun playing with the finished article. Thanks. Here we go. So what we need to do is select this one and we're going to create an offset and we want to go outward by 0 0.8 and say OK. OK, so then I'm going to select everything actually before I do that before we change anything I'm just going to redo that put that back over there so I'm going to take a duplicate that can be used over here as a piece in file so we've got a duplicate of that should we need it so now we can do the offset I just wanted to make sure for I played around with this one that we hadn't actually done anything untoward so then I'm going to try welding which gives us that I'm going to double click to expose the nodes to get those couple of areas in there and delete them that give us that odd path now all I'm going to do is do an offset because I only want it to be 0 0.4 I think it's 0 0.4 I'm just going to cancel it for a second and just measure it up against this one because I can't remember whether we went with a see that is slightly I think it's slightly bigger I'm just going to line it up and see I think it might be all right at that I think it is slightly bigger so what we can do we can offset it and send it inward by 0 0.4 so it's a smaller one and we'll just have a look at that one now and see if that's more like the size So I think the best thing to do is to see how our digital stamp fares on that piece before we go any further and make a decision whether we want it to be 0 point. Yeah, we do need it to be slightly bigger than that. So I'm going to leave that there. Uh, is this a slightly bigger one? I think that's the slightly bigger one. So let's just put the digital stamp on that one. And that one you can see lines up when it's got, if we just zoom in, it lines up, but it's also got a small amount of leeway with our map behind so that when we're lining up, it's going to line up perfectly. So again, we can line it up and that's going to be the perfect size. So that's the one we need. Okay, so that's what we've got in our stencil yes and we've got this piece here now the other one that's slightly smaller this one I'm just going to delete and then it doesn't confuse things and then I'm going to display it and zoom everything to the map and we can review so now we've got our detailed stencil our simple stencil we've got our um stamping image that we would draw and then colour and we've also got a working copy of the one with this little piece that works so we're going to leave that there now this is the inner part that we're going to start using for our next step if you will so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shrink this down so that it's covering the outer edges of this part in the middle and I'm going to zoom in so we can see what we're doing whoops not that far so next what we're going to do we've got if we just click off we've got this square and we've got that um, 0.08 
border and I'm going to position it so that it's in the middle and then I'm going to click on the square and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to shrink it down in size and then position it inside the previous one and I need to go a little bit smaller I'm doing it by eye so that I can see and I'm just going to select both squares and I'm going to line them up centrally and vertically and what I'm actually trying to achieve here is if I select the middle square I want it to be small enough that it's just catching not much but part of the design so I'm just going to click the one in the, click the center and I'm going to send that to the back for now and, this, and this one and I'm just going to line those two up centrally and vertically and that's overlapping enough I think maybe just could go a little bit narrower there oh, no I didn't want to move that one so I'll take that back it's the square we need so we're going to have to just send that to the back a minute so that we can get to this square and we're going to have to send that one to the back because we want the middle square if you will and we're just going to make it a little bit narrower not much just so it's overlapping a little bit there and again now we're going to try move this one out the way and we're going to try to line this up centrally and vertically and we're going to see what we've got now now that I think is just about maybe could do to be a little bit taller there not much and a little bit here so it's still just a tad overlapped we just want it just overlapping we don't want any massive differences so let's have a look where we're at yeah so now I'm going to zoom fit to map like so um, and I need to get a bit smaller because I want to see where that other my other parts have gone so this bit here the stamped image should fit on that bit there and it just about fits so you'd position it and again that's what we're aiming for and this other bit behind is going to be um, like a plate for it if you will so that you can leave it in the cardstock I'm just going to delete that one and rather than I'm just going to create an offset of that one outward and I'm going to do it by 0.5 inches whoops so that that'll make it a quarter of an inch all the way around let's have a see what that's looking like and I didn't really want to leave I'm going to just redo that because I've done the wrong I'll just explain what I've done I've put them round and I want them bevel because I want it to stay as a square so if that happens and you get a rounded border and that's not what you want that's what you need to do so now I need to send this shape bring this shape needs to go to the back so we're arranging and sending that one to the back this shape needs to be on top of that shape and then we're going to subtract so what we've effectively made there if I just put some colour in is a frame a frame that is just touching the outer edges of that which is that layer there for cutting if you will and then we're going to select everything and we're going to go and process the overlap and weld so now what we've created is, if we put this on, we need to just bring that to the top so we can see. That's where our stamped image will go and where we've got some gaps in between. Remember, we've got these on this working copy here and that's what we're going to use to do the next part. So I'm going to arrange and bring it to the front and I'm going to position it so it's in perfect position on this matting layer underneath and I'm just going to make my stamp layer go back on its cutting area if you will what's well, going to cut round it and I'm just going to select both line it up centrally and vertically and then I'm going to select them both and I'm going to shove them both off to the mat so that's the drawing file and the cutting file together 
Now this one is what we're going to use to punch out some of these other parts and this is where I'm going to need to refer to that one but look at this one. So the, green, the orange one now I need to just make sure that's in perfect position and I'm 100% happy because once I start doing this I can't change my mind. So I'm just going to bring it onto the mat so that I can see it clearly and I'm relatively happy that these are all nicely around the edges now. So what I'm going to do is click on to the orange one and I'm going to ungroup. Okay, so then we've got to work out what we've got. So this piece is a leaf, this piece is a leaf and this is. So what we're going to be doing first of all is we're going to click on that and the one next to it and we're going to hold the shift key down, this one and this one. And I'm not going to do them all at once, I'm just going to do some of them so you get the idea. And then, so I'm selecting all the pieces that are missing here and then I'm going to click on the grey bit and I'm going to say subtract. Now, you think, oh goodness gracious, it's lost the image. But if we arrange and send it to the back, then you can see that we haven't lost it at all. It is still there. All we've done is cut these pieces out. Okay, so we now need to just check. So we've got that one there. Is there anything else that we've missed? So when we zoom in, if we just zoom into that area, this is sitting on top of the this file, if you will, and it's cut out those areas but left the stalks. And I think it might be an advantage if you're not entirely sure what you're going to be cutting out and what you're going to be leaving, is just colour green what is going to be staying green. So you could click on that, why am I still on that one? Select, that's why. And you could click and we're going to fill it with green. So all the areas that are going to be green, you can make green and then you know that you're not deleting those. Like so. If this helps, it's always worth doing even though it takes a little bit of extra time. But sometimes when I'm putting a more complicated file together, I find this helps a great deal. So then we've got the two stalks for the flowers, one there, I've just spotted, you see by doing this, I've just spotted a place that we need to subtract because we've got a bit missing here and we've still got the bit there. So I'm going to select that one and the grey part, I'm going to go on edit and subtract and again it'll bring the grey one to the top so I'm going to arrange and send it backward to the back and that will bring up that one again. So now I think I've got everything green on here that should be green and I've got everything pink, orange, I know it's orange but I'm not too worried about that, that's what I've got. Okay, now, so what we're going to do next is some of these areas actually could just do to be a little bit more joined, if you will, for want of a better expression and this is how I handled that. So to make it so that it's not just held in, in these really few flimsy lines, what I did is take a, an oval shape, not a circle, an oval, an ellipse, and brought that on and then closed it down. Because this means it's going to be a nice smooth edge shape that you're actually welding together and it's not going to affect anything too drastically. But before we do anything else, I'm just going to select all of these petals for the first time. Oops, no. I'm going to do a duplicate and then hopefully move them off to the side because these are going to make our matting lit and going to have missed a part down. So I'll just undo that and I'll do it once again. So I'm going to just select all of the petals, including the middle one, which I missed last time. I think that's them all. And I'm going to duplicate it so you do right click and duplicate. So that's that flower. And I'm going to bring out the do exactly the same thing with this one. Oops. Do that, just start again if you get a wrong part. And like I said, it is a bit fiddly, but it's worth doing because once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. So again, I'm just going to bring that flower out because these are going to make my matting layers for the flowers as well. So I'm going to first of all select 
the second one because although they're very similar they are slightly different these flowers so so that I'm doing it perfect if you will and just won't want that one and I think I've got them all if not I'll have to go back and try again and that's that one there so although they're similar if you look at the middles they are slightly different so you'll be able to tell which one's matting where when you get to that stage now I'll so that's that done. I'm happy that I've deleted all those parts and I'm just going to move that part away for a minute and I'm just going to select the bits underneath and I'm going to now re... Oh, I'm going to select the pieces underneath, sorry. And I'm just going to regroup them. And I'm not going to delete them yet because I might need... I want to put them back into place to see what they look like on this piece when I've finished. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some extra support, if you will, to our file by adding a few connecting points. So what I'm going to do is just bring on that oval shape and I'm going to select it and duplicate it so that I don't need to keep bringing on another oval. And I'm just going to select both and weld. So that's give us another join there which is going to make it more stable. And I'm going to do a similar thing over here, but first of all, take a duplicate. And remember that you'd, you'd, you're not tied to have them all the same size. You can rotate them round, but by having them ovals rather than um, squares or rectangles, it just gives them a nicer look on the project. It doesn't look as like blocky, if you will, for want of a better expression. And I'm just dragging this one into it. Just doesn't matter if I'm going a bit higher than I want it to be because once it's welded, it's not going to show. And I'm going to not press the wrong one. Just undo if you do that. Don't worry, you haven't lost all your work. So I'm going to just do that again. And I'm going to weld. Now, an area of the welding here that might be a little bit problematic because it's so narrow here. If you could if I just zoom in, you'll see what I mean. It's very, very narrow. So what I'm going to do, not that, display, if you do that, it's quicker to do zoom all my objects to mat and then just go for it again by zooming in, but not quite as far. So again, we're here and then go on your selection tool and I'm just going to adjust the size of this so it's quite slim because I don't want to make it massively different and I'm going to rotate it so that it's a similar, a similar angle to this one and I want it to go right over the top of that join where it's a little bit narrow so I'm just going to take it a tad wider and I'm reasonably happy at that so I'm going to select that one and I'm just going to select the oval and I'm going to weld that and that's just made that bridge that little bit more secure and again, let's have another look. We could do with something here and possibly something... No, we could probably get away, actually. Maybe put one here and one here, and I think we're good. We're going to call that good. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to just shrink this one down a bit, and I'm going to rotate it so that it looks like it's part and meant to be there. But really, these are just anchoring points to the frame, if you will. That's all I'm doing is anchoring so that it's giving it a little bit more support in the actual frame itself. And I'm just going to put one more at this top. I'm going to shrink it down narrower, make it a little bit longer, and I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to put it in a, a jaunty angle so that it looks like it's meant to be there. I'm just going to take it up a little bit. And again, select it, and then I'm going to weld. And what I'm going to do now is because this is going to be like a piece of card, if you will, I'm going to fill it with white. In fact, I'm going to fill it with a very, very pale grey. I think so. I'm going to select it and fill it with a very, very pale. It's quite, still quite dark, but I can take the opacity down so it's looking a lot paler. So that's just so you can see, because white's very difficult to see on white. So I'm going to zoom back out just by taking it down a little bit and I'm going to come back to this orange file that we have here that we just moved off while we did all that sort of jiggery pokery with the bridges and things so I'm just going to scooch it along till it's back in position 
And what we should see is that now fits perfectly onto the card, if you will. So the idea is, is that you would get your, um, you drag these two bits in together and the this bit. So your frame and the stamped image, if you will. So the whole thing. So that moves as one now. You wouldn't group them, but you would bring them in together. I would then personally get it to draw first. What have I done here now? Should that be green? It doesn't matter. It's part of the cut file. It's part of the drawing file anyway. Let's just click off and see. I'm not getting the drawing file now. I'm going to make sure that what's happened is it's on top so I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to send it to the back that's why the orange ones are not as bright that's better so just for argument's sake I'm going to ungroup and make that one orange because it's going to drive me nuts if I don't so I'm just going to change that to the orange and then they're all the same colour although no that should be green because it's a leaf right so I'm going to now just click on that one, go to my, oh no, I don't want everything selecting, just once, go to my layers, I'm going to find the shape that I'm on, and it'll be highlighted there, I'm just going to hide it for a second, close down the colours, select everything, and group, and then I can, where's my group gone again now that's not toggled on? here so so the idea with that is then you would bring it in together get this kind of cut to draw the file obviously it's not going to put all this color in you're going to do that color in yourself and then you've got this part you then set it to cut so this will be cutting this would be drawing so you draw that so that would be a drawing file that would be a cutting file so you draw it first and then cut so then that could go on a card and the idea is getting back to the what i was going to say is if we bring on that square we can make it so it's bigger or smaller than as a matting layer it's entirely up to you you can either have it slightly bigger than we can do it bigger because i did it smaller on the last one i think and it depends whether you want a board around or so just going to make this slightly bigger than the file underneath, like so. So it gives us a matting layer almost that we can place that on. And I'm just going to select everything and I'm going to line it up centrally and vertically and hope that it doesn't move my stamp. So now that layer that we've just put on which will should be on the top we need to send to the back very back and if we give that a color now we can make it like a yellowy or a goldy color oh now that's because we've got something we need to arrange and bring that one forward this one going is that at the back this one we should have had it pale gray with the opacity right down but the thing is if we take the opacity down too much but now we can make it white right so that's what it would actually look like so imagine that this yellow piece at the back was a piece of marigold or um glitter card they'd all be peeping through the holes that, that you could scan and cut would cut out and you'd have your stamped layers on there so that means now we've got that part of the file complete now the only other thing that i added and I'm just going to display and zoom to mat so we can see where we're at. And I don't want it so small because we've got lots of things. So remember, I can get rid of all this on this side now because that was all from the previous file. So I'm just going to delete that and then it doesn't confuse us any. So just give it a chance to catch up. We've deleted that and this is all the new file that we've made. So let's review. We've got our detail stencil. We've got our less detailed stencil now where on earth have i put that cutting file oh dear dear me so we've somehow managed to lose our outline for this one but it's not a problem all we need to do oh no we haven't it's underneath 
we haven't lost it. I thought I hadn't deleted it. So what I'll need to do is just move that one away. And you can see there's our cutting file for just if we wanted to use it as a digital stamp and just cut it out. That's what we would do. There you go. Okay. What you could do if you wanted is if you wanted to, let me just get these lined up. centrally and vertically because obviously it's not going to cut out on those bits so what you could do if you wanted is clicking on this orange layer it, we could have left those in if we'd have wanted to but we didn't and it it's entirely up to you or you could use let me just think about this for a second could we use that one that had cut them out. You could just cut it out if you if that bothered you. You could cut the file out on here, so like it was, and undo. And then place that one round it to get rid of all the bits where it's attached to the. So if that bit being not coloured in in the centre bothers you, where I've just said here, where we've got the cutouts here, then. What you could do is just get it to cut it out on here and then use that one to get these bit or just snip it out with your scissors either or. So the last part that we need to be doing is the flowers. So first of all, I'm going to group them. I'm going to deal with the flowers one by one and I'm just going to group that one first of all. So I'm going to group, group and group. Oops. Keep missing it. I need it to be in the crosshairs. And then we need to. Oh, I've duplicated it now. Grr. Select it. Well, we've got the crosshairs. And then group. So they're all nicely grouped together. So let's do one at a time. So first of all, we're going to create an offset and we're going to do 0 0.08 and say OK. And that's give us an offset of that. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to undo that for a second because it's easier if we do a duplicate first. Move it off. That's going to be our drawing element that we draw. Then we're going to create our cutting element. So I'm going to 0 0.8, say OK. Select it all and I'm going to just weld it. Now that becomes the cutting for this one, the cutting file for that one, if you will. And all I did then actually was take the offset down a little bit because the offset's a little bit big at the minute. So if we offset it and take it inward by 0 0.04 and say OK, it's the inner one we want, the slightly smaller one. And if we line those two up centrally and vertically, we've now got a dedicated drawing file. That's the cutting file and it's on top. So I'm just going to click off and I'm going to send it to the bottom. So now we've got our drawing element and the cutting file is right at the bottom. I don't know if I can get it without getting the... I would be able to if I zoomed in, so I'll zoom in a bit. And if we just click on there, that's the cutting element for that file. So now if you feel that that was too big and you've not got enough detail, you could try doing a 0 0.4 outward offset right from the off and seeing if that would weld. So, again, what I didn't do is make a duplicate of that one first. So always make a duplicate of your drawing file before you actually create your offset. Outward, say OK. And then we'll select everything and weld. Yeah, this looks more like the one that I did yesterday because what I did then was bring on a circle 
to weld out the centre, if you will. So I'm just going to squish this right down. And it's a bit of faff, but I think it's worth it. All these little extras that you're doing are going to make your file look more professional. And I'm just going to try... At that. Cause what I didn't like about this one, when you got it over it, there's a lot of white space showing in between the petals where I wanted them to be a bit further in. And I can squish that one down a bit and squish that one up a little bit. And we'll try it at that because I can always um, deal with any nodes that haven't been welded. So like in this case, I can go in, select them, select the nodes that are not welded and take them out. Not that one. Edit, undo that one. I've got the wrong one. Just need to zoom in a bit. I'm making life difficult for myself. And there's no need. So I'll just select and drag, minus. Select and drag, minus. So then we can get rid of that shape for a second because it's getting in the way. And if we display, zoom all objects to matte, we've now got a better, I believe, cutting element for that one. So if we just select both of those and line up centrally and vertically, that's now, I believe, if we zoom in, a much better cutting around it than that one. So you've now got your drawing element and your cutting element. So that cutting element at the minute's on top. I'm just going to send it to the back so that I can show you. you have got your drawing and you have got your cutting element. So that's the first flower done. So I'm going to delete these two. So we're going with a 0.4 offset. So remember, duplicate the flower first. So we'll get it right with this one so that it's not as confusing. Select this one. Create an offset. We'll go outwards by 0.4 and say OK. Select all of the parts of that and weld. And it is going to leave us this raggedy bit in the middle again. So I'm going to pull on that cir circle again. Obviously, it's going to be miles too big for what we need initially. But we're going to shrink it right down. And I think to save me doing that next time, I'll just do a duplicate for the second flower. And we're going to position... The circle at the center and we can just squish it in in places so that we're keeping a lot of the, more of the detail and then we're going to weld I need to select them both to weld I'm going to weld and then again we've got some nodes that are being a bit of a pain so again we'll just double click and delete them by Highlighting and hitting minus, highlighting and minus, highlighting and minus. Okay, click off. So now we've got a cutting file and I believe it's for this one because I think I've forgotten now. So let's just have a look at that one. Yeah, it looks like that one fits that one. So we're going to line them up centrally and vertically. So now we've got a perfect cutting layer and a drawing layer. Now what we've got again is that one is on top so we need to send it to the back. So we've got our cutting layer on top and our drawing layer which we haven't changed so we need to make that a drawing layer. So that's why it's always a good idea to check. We've got cutting layer at the back, drawing layer on top. Then I'm going to go again, zoom all objects to map and we've just got one more flower to go. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm just going to get where I want to be, which is there. So I'm going to zoom in on that flower. I'm going to go on select again. I'm going to duplicate it before I do any jiggery porkery with the file. Select it, create an offset, 0.4 outwards, say OK. Select all the parts and weld. And again, we've got that bit of a mess in the middle, but that's not a problem because we've got our little circle ready to drag in so we can keep a lot of that detail in between the petals. And if I'm struggling to get the circle, it's because the rest are like 
so so I'm just going to drag that one up a bit so we're getting the detail in between the petals so we've not got as much white space showing and then I'm going to select everything and weld whoops now that we've got an intersecting path so we need to just adjust a bit we'll try again now and weld and again so let's see what's causing the issue it's one of these pieces here so I'm just going to move that circle out of the way so I can see what's happening. And I think it might be because it's not actually. So we might need to make the circle a little bit bigger. Let's see how we go. Let's try it again. Oh dear, dear me. Just going to make that slightly bigger and it won't matter in the great grand scheme of things because I think that's where our problem lies. So I'm still not having it. So what's not welding? Let's see what we've not got welded. So it's one of those three pieces there. So it's this. Let's have a look. Edit, undo. Fix it back together. Let's move that off. So this one's not welded. So we need to look at the nodes. So let's just minus that one off because it could be. Minus. See if it'll weld to that one now. It says it's got an open path. Oh, not that one changed it right I'm just going to zoom back to with it fit to the map and we might have to do this one a slightly different way so I'm going to delete it I'm going to create an offset and we'll just make it slightly bigger the offset and I can always take it back down afterwards and see if this helps any so if we select everything and weld now that's looking better so just double click and we just need to get rid of those nodes at the centre that are in the middle, like so. We'll just zoom in. Oops, not that far. And just select where we are, where have we gone? I'm going to have to zoom back out because I can't find anything now. So I'm going to click off and, oh dear, where's my flower gone? Oh, I did the cardinal sin and I didn't take a copy. I'm just going to edit undo and I know that that's the outline we want. I'm going to duplicate that, shove it off to the side. Then I'm going to do the offset and I'm going to keep it at that 0 0.6. Say OK. I wonder if it would do it at 0 0.5 actually because then it would really be very little different. So let's just try 0 0.5 and if not we'll go back to 6. Say OK. And then we'll weld looks to be welding now so I'm going to double click we'll just zoom in so that we can get rid of all these mad nodes so that was easier than faffing about trying to find out which one was an intersecting path because there was too many pieces all close together which would have been a bit of a pain so I just need to be on the selection tool now and I'm just going to delete quite a few of these nodes that are causing issues Right, so I'm just one or two more to go. And these ones. And I think we're there. Yep. So I'm going to display, zoom all my things to the map. Let's have this one to the top. Let's put it to the top to start with and then so bring to the front. Let's make sure we're on a draw and position. Now, if it bothers you that that is, you could always do an inward. Let's 
say OK. And then that should be the same offset now as the others. Although it looks to be a lot smaller. Okay, we're just going to go with it at 0.05. I don't really think anybody's going to notice that that's slightly bigger than the other one. So these now would be the ones that you could cut and colour and then you could map them onto your other pieces or this piece to make it more three-dimensional. So these are all the parts of the file complete now. So let's just review. We've got our drawing file and then our outward cutting file, which need, they need to be lined up together and they would be then sent across together like that so you could draw. You need to make sure that the cut file's underneath. So you could cut and draw, oops, and draw. So that would just give you something to stick on your card and then you could do these and decoupage them on. Alternatively, we could take a copy of that. I'm going to do a copy rather than move it. And that could be cut out in different papers and pieced back into there. Okay. Like so. Then you've got, so I'm going to just drag these a bit closer so we know that one's that one and just keeping them in the orientation that they're wearing on the sort of ish so there's our three flowers three individual cutting and drawing files for the flowers for the decoupage element then we've got the matting layer for behind and the uh, I don't really know what to call this, like a plate, if you will, that you can have so that it see you see through the, like so, so that then when that's drawn onto there, you can have some gold shining through and it just gives another dimension to your project. So, that's all the parts to the file complete. And at the minute, the about five and a one well, that one is that one so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring everything on and to the middle so I'm going to just temporarily group a few things together I'm just going to group those flowers together so that I can move them easier when we move them back I'm just going to group those together temporarily as well and bring those to the middle and this one to the middle then I'm just going to group those temporarily and bring those to the middle. Then I'm going to select everything and group everything. And then I'm going to make it no more than 5 inches wide and 7 inches high. Oops, so I don't want to maintain the aspect ratio. We want that to be 7. So that will give us the right size card for... A five by seven mount so we're going to now ungroup everything and we're going to peel all those layers back now so I'm just going to ungroup those so that's our detail stencil and our drawing file that can be paper pieced or you could make it well actually we'll make it a cut file and then because we've got a spare anyway so we've got a cut file for in there and then we've got our three flowers which we just need to ungroup. I'll do that in a minute. I'll ungroup everything once I've got everything off. There's the basic stencil. There's the matting layer stencil I guess. Here's our backing layer for that one. Here's our stamp for that one. You could use this one or you could use the orange one. It's entirely up to you. I think that's the one we had as a... That's the cutting and drawing file, so we'll have that one. as. So we'll ungroup it. Because then we've got the drawing and the cutting file. 
this should be draw and it is so let's just review that we've got everything cutting and everything drawing that should be so that should be cut that should be cut that should be cut and that should be cut and they are this should be draw that should be draw but the one behind it should be cut yeah this flowers should be ungrouped now and the top part should be draw 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 and the bottom part should be cut I'm going to have not got the bottom part there. Cut and cut. That's it. So, and this bit's the drawing which goes on this one. So, let's just line those three up together now that you'd want those all three to go over together so that's that one put the basic one on put the paper pieced one on and oops didn't want to do that just undo and the drawing and cutting file basic one on so there's all your parts to the file um, like I said, it does take a while to make the file and all the individual parts, but once you've done that, you've got that file then forever. So all you need to do then is go on File, Export, FCM. Okay, hang on, some are hidden. What does that mean? Cancel. Let's see what we've done. Why have we hidden some? I didn't want to where we had. Oh, I know. The hidden in here it means so let's just see what it's hiding that we've not what we've not remembered so I'm just going to make sure all the eyes are switched on I think they're all on now I don't know what it was hiding because it's not obvious that one belongs with that one That one's our cutting and oops. That's our cutting and stamp. That's the three parts of the deco. There's our stencil. So I don't know quite what was hiding, but something clearly was. And when it said hidden, at first I just thought, what does that mean? But what it meant were is we had one of the eyes ticked. One of these, like that, would have been switched off and it couldn't save it then. But I think we've gone through all the layers now and they're all switched on and everything's there. So we can say file, export FCM file. And we're going to call it stencil um, stamp plate, for want of a better description. And we'll say save. And that's going to save it as an FCM. And then if I send that now, transfer going to transfer the file to my machine okay so that's it i hope you've enjoyed watching and that you will like share and subscribe and you'll have a go at making this i will make the file available on my um, youtube channel uh, sorry not my youtube channel my blog beverly 10 blogspot crafty chaos and there it, the file will be able to be downloaded after the video has been released so happy crafting everyone and if, if it gets a good response then we can do some more ideas using a different floral image if you like so please leave comments below so what you need to do is click the down arrow if you're on a mobile device and leave a comment at the bottom or if you're on a Mac or a PC, there's usually a show more button and it's underneath there where it tells you about the file and any links. Okay, so that's it for now and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.